everybody. My name is Oliver and you are watching the first of hopefully many videos about H5P that I'm creating. And today I'd like to answer the question, what is H5P? So if you already know the answer to that, feel free to skip this video. But if you don't, hang in a second, well, uh, probably five to 10 minutes and we'll see. So what you see is the website of H5P that you can find at h5p.org. And it says, create, share, and reuse interactive HTML5 content in your browser, which is pretty abstract, right? Um, but luckily, there's a section called examples and downloads, and I can use it to show you what H5P is instead of answering the question, what H5P is. Um, it looks like this and it contains a list of so-called content types, which together form H5P. And I will not show you everything in detail, but I'll have a look at yeah, probably three content types. And we could start with dialogue cards, maybe. This is it. Um, if you learn a language, you will probably know the technique of using flashcards, where you um, write a word on top of a flashcard and the translation at the backside of the flashcard. And then you have a look at the word and try to guess or to know the correct translation. And you can do that as well. Um, maybe you're a teacher, you could create a deck of flashcards here, but you have many, many more options in contrast to paper flashcards. So as you can see, you can add an image, which is pretty nice. And we also have a button which can play a sound sample. So if I click it, it should read um, Arandanos Azules. I don't know, I don't speak Spanish. Uh, let's hear. Okay, not even close. Um, but luckily I know that those are blueberries and we can turn the card and they are blueberries. And you can go over to the next card and the next card. And as a teacher, you could, for example, create a deck of several cards that your students can use to learn the language. And uh, if you wonder, okay, I can't award points and students don't have to enter um, the correct translation. There's also a content type which can do that, which is called flashcards. And I invite you to have a look at that yourself. Um, I'll head back to the list of content types. And what should we have a look at next? Um, yeah, let's take image hotspots. Um, this one which is probably my favorite content type, although it's pretty simple, actually. Um, you can add an image in the background, and then you can define some hotspots over here. And if you click on them, you get some more information. Oh, right here, a window swipes in from the right and contains some text. Um, but I guess this is better. Yeah. Hey, what's up, everyone? Today I'm gonna show you how to make this. So as you can see, these windows can also contain videos and you could also put more text on top if you like to or maybe images that's uh, possible and you can really use it this content type for giving great presentations which is really cool well, let's head back to the example page and now we'll have a look at the most famous content type which is called interactive video let's have a look if you've taken some online courses lately, we'll probably have seen something like that. Um, but maybe we should just hit that play button here below and see what happens. The video starts, of course. Something pops up, but I'll skip that. I'll wait for the next one. Which says multiple choice quiz. And obviously we can put multiple choice quizzes on top of videos with H5P. So there's a strawberry, we can check that, and it's correct, let's continue. And we can jump to the next one actually. Um, it's similar like a multiple choice quiz, I guess. Um, I can see blueberries, and I know there was a strawberry before. So this is probably correct, and it is. And we can continue, and we can also jump to the third one, which is called fill in the blanks and that's a close so we have to type in the correct solution which will be blueberries in this case and we'll yeah we'll stick with that hit check as you can see we could try again because the solution was not completely correct 
and we could have a look at the solution. And as a teacher, we have many options that we can configure to um, adapt the content type to our needs. For example, uh, what should happen if I answer incorrectly? Should I go back to the start of the video? Should I go to a different position? All that's possible, but I guess that's stuff for three other videos, which I might create, but um, not right now. So we were, well, let's stop that. And, or maybe we could go back to this page um, just to see the examples. So now you've seen what H5P is, but why should you use it? And what are your benefits? And I can only give you my top five reasons. Um, other people may have others, but yeah, let's, let's go. Um, first of all, it is really easy to use. Um, as a student, I don't have to read a manual to interact with those content types to answer the quizzes and questions. And also as a teacher, I don't have to read a manual to create those. It's really, really simple most of the time. Um, H5P is free to use, so you really don't have to pay anything, not even as a company. You can create stuff with H5P and include it in your products, and you don't have to pay royalties or anything like that, which is probably pretty cool for you if you're a company. Then H5P is not only free to use, but it's open to use um, because it's open source software. So if you can code a little bit like myself, then you can have a look at the source code, you can change it to your needs, and um, you can also contribute to the development of new features and content types, which is really nice because it makes H5P kind of a community project. And yeah, that differentiates it a little bit from commercial products, I guess. Then my reason number four is, you really don't have to install any special software on your computer, you just need a browser. And um, this is valid for desktop systems and mobile systems as well. So you can use maybe Chrome on your desktop browser and you can also use Safari on your iPhone or whatever and it works. So um, you can create content once and it runs anywhere, which is pretty cool. And finally, my reason number five is um, you can take H5P where you need it. So you can create stuff here on this website if you like to, but um, you can also um, get a plugin for Moodle, WordPress or Drupal and install it there and you can use it there. Um, and it doesn't matter why you create content, you can embed it elsewhere. So you can create it here, for example, and take a standard HTML page and embed the stuff there. So you don't even see this page. And uh, you can download the content maybe from this system and then you go to your Moodle system where you have the plugin, upload it there and use it there and you don't have to change anything, which is really great. So um, I think I'm close to my, my 10 minutes limit. So let's wrap it up for today. I hope you like H5P. Um, maybe you just head over here to h5p.org, give it a shot. And yeah, that's it. And also, if you like to, you can watch my videos, maybe subscribe to this channel. I'm going to create some more tutorials and yeah, related videos and stuff. But anyway, enjoy H5P. Take care. Bye bye.